Cowabunga dudes and dudettes, this is Anthony, a.k.a. Batbomb82, and today I'll be doing a review of the Star Wars realization, Ronin Mandalorian in Beskar armor, and Grogu. Now, as we can see, both figures come in a standard realization box with a great image of both characters. And if we turn the box around, we can see multiple images showcasing the figures in multiple posing positions with their different interchangeable parts and accessories. So with the box out of the way, let's go ahead and crack these figures open and let them breathe. Alright guys, now let's check out this new Mandalorian Din Djarin movie realization figure. Man, I, am, I love this line, it's so cool, so unique. How they take these Star Wars designs and then really give them this like feudal Japan samurai look to it. I think they're really cool. I don't have a ton of these, but I do have a few. Uh, and this is one that I definitely needed to pick up. Uh, so the helmet here looks fantastic. Again, I love the sculpting. How they blended in that Mandalorian T-Visor into like a samurai helmet. You can see all the studs and things like that all throughout the back. It looks really good. I love how you even see a bit of a wash back there, making it look all dirty and a little, uh, maybe a little rusty, which looks really cool. Same thing with the pauldron here. I love this man. And you can see again, really how they blended in the Star Wars elements with the samurai elements, which I think is cool. Shoulder pads here, the texture of the undersuit looks really good. They even have the sleeves there, I love that. The gauntlets look really, really nice. A little bit of turquoise in there. The little bands are all painted. That's why I love the paint on these, it's really premium, man. You got a little Tonto in there. Uh, that is non-removable, that is part of the sculpt. But the skirt piece looks all good too. I love here with the uh, little gauntlet right here with the little whistles. What are they called, the whistling birds or something like that? I forgot what they're called, but that is super dope. Same with the bag, got the little skirt piece flaps coming up here, which are separate pieces, so those look really nice too. Uh, his straps all look great. Coming down to the legs here, again, the texturing of the fabric of the pants looks really awesome too. And you'll see some of that rusting, kind of wash and dirty it up a little bit, gun holster. Same thing with the boots, again, love how they incorporate these samurai-like boots. But add things like the stars, little clips or magazines or whatever, little charges right there, looking really good. Oh, looking super awesome. You can see the dirtiness of the wraps and things like that. No peg holes, but you can see some sculpting down there, which looks so freaking good, man. Again, these figures, are so beautiful, so different. Um, I really wish they would do more things outside of Star Wars. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love what they're doing with Star Wars here. And I bl believe they've done a couple other things, but not a whole lot. I really wish they would pick up all the licenses and do more figures like this, because this is incredible. And he just honestly looks like a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. Next up, he does come with a little Grogu figure, which I think is so cool. And I love how they did this because uh, he has the little tuft, little ponytail at the top of the head. It looks awesome. The paint looks great, especially like in the ears. How you see the little bits of pink in there looking awesome. The eyes, even a little bit of pink in the red lips right there looks really good. I love his whole uh, outfit that he's wearing with a wrap around there and his little patas coming out like that and the little hands again. A little touches of pink really help make it a little more real. And this looks really awesome, man. So I love this this little dude right here. Uh, now the cool thing, I, I kind of thought he was going to be a bit of a static piece, but he actually is articulated. Um, so the head's kind of on a ball joint, kind of roll around, up and down a little bit, pivot a tiny bit. Arms can go up and down, back and forth. Um, I think you could turn the hands, but my fat fingers can't get in there. But it looks like they're just on ball pegs. And then kind of the same thing uh, with the uh, abdomen here. You kind of just roll around, you kind of roll his hips around, boots, 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 see all that kind of stuff, turn left and right. And the same thing with the uh, feet here too, those appear to be on ball pegs as well, so pretty cool that he's actually a little articulated, N nothing crazy, nothing great of course, uh, but he does have something there, and again, I just think he looks really, really good. Moving on to the accessories here, we do get Grogu's floating egg, uh, and I love this man. Again, it almost looks like, instead of that polished like gunmetal silver that we normally see, this looks like ivory, which I think is super dope. Uh, I love this, how they got a little wash in there. You got the sculpted uh, cloth in there, uh, and it does fit him in there, so it's kind of like uh, meant to fit him in a particular way like that, so he can rest in there. It's kind of form-fitted to his body, even the back of the head, I sculpted in there like that. So again, we could put him in there like so, uh, but we also get a carriage. 
uh, that or <laughs> that you could put him in. Uh, and this is really cool too. The wheels do spin. That's really nice. I love the wood grain on there, looking really good. The handles can be held on by uh, Mando there, uh, and this will just rest in. There's little grooves in there. That'll form fit to the little egg uh, like that. And then you can rest him and push him around like that. Again, that's really cool, really unique, and honestly, a lot of fun. So I really, really like that. Next up, we do get interchangeable hands. Uh, so we do get grippy hands for both sides for holding things like his sword. Uh, and then both trigger finger hands for both sides, which is really nice for holding his different types of guns. Uh, and then we do get uh, closed fisted hands that come packaged in the box. So his katana, it's a pretty standard katana that we see with most of the figures here. Just pretty simple, nothing crazy, nice little sculpting on the wrap there. He can pull this out, it's a really nice curved blade, so I love that a lot. Uh, and then he can, there is a little holster right here on the side like that, so you kind of just loop this through there like so, and he will holster it at his side like that, so that works out nice. He also does come with his pistol, uh, and this is one of the things that I really love about this line. Uh, the weapons are all so unique, because you can tell it's like futuristic, and kind of looks like Mandalorian's, the Mando's pistol, uh, but it also has like this flintlock kind of design, which I think is super cool. You can see the little hammer right there, uh, which is great. A nice little hole for his finger right there, but I love this design, and then the colors look great. That nice, uh, dirty gunmetal looks really good, and looks like you can probably port an effect in there if you have something that fits there as well. Uh, this can be held in his trigger fingers as like that, uh, but he also does get a gun holster on this side, and you can just store that in there, right there, and it will stay there nice and tight, so that's really cool, man. We also do get his rifle. This thing is gorgeous. Again, you'll see how it kind of has uh, that almost old school blunderbuss type of style mixed with the futuristic designs of the uh, Mandalorian's gun there, looking really good. You got the little tuning forks at the end, but it looks so good. The silvers, that gun metal, a little bit of rusted gold there, the wood grain of the butt of the gun looking really cool. So I love that as well. You can see that we do have a peg there. Um, it is able to port onto the back like so, so you can peg that on there like that and that will stay and that's so much better and so much more secure than the black series ones for all any of you that have the black series figures that rifle just does not stay whatsoever and that looks really cool so and it, it's not going anywhere man that stays on there really really solid and again it can be held into the uh, trigger finger hands very very nicely or you can have the option, instead of having the gun on his back or the rifle, you have his jetpack here. You can see you can stand a little peg on the inside right there, but this looks super cool. Again, how they kind of took the blend of uh, Star Wars and like, almost like a um, steampunk kind of thing going on here. But I love how the thrusters are a little dirty, uh, have some different colorization to them. You know, from the heat and things like that, you can see those stud marks on there. But this looks super cool and I love that a lot. And you can take the figure, port that onto the back right here. If I actually do it lined up like that, and boom, we'll just even this out right there. And there you go. Now you have the options to do either the uh, jetpack or the rifle, which I think r looks really, really cool. Uh, one thing I will say that I'm kind of missing, and I don't know if maybe I could do some, get some a third party to do it. I kind of want him to have his like little cape thing, so I might have to commission someone to give me a little soft goods cape. Uh, maybe with a bendy wire in there. I think that would be really cool. I don't need it, uh, but it's something I do kind of want. And, and you, know, you might not even care, but I think that would be a cool little extra for it. But what we do get here is freaking awesome, man. I mean, look at this guy. He's just gorgeous. So now moving on to the articulation here. Uh, the head and the neck are on separate ball pegs. So you get a lot of good motion in there. It does turn left and right. Uh, can look up that far and down all the way that much, and then pivot side to side. Uh, you'll see this neck collar piece uh, will pop out a little bit. There's little ball pegs. You can see it kind of connects in there. You kind of just got to push those down to maneuver them to get them to stay, uh, and it'll look a little better like that. These shoulder pads are also on little ball pegs with little hinges on them, so you can get these out of the way, and the arms can go all the way up like that with moving those little hinges on those shoulder pauldrons. So you can go all the way up that far. Rotation of there as well. There's a ball peg into the uh, whole chest upper torso area, so that rolls around in there too. Lots of good motion in there with that butterfly joint. Uh, we do get a single bend at the elbow, but it bends pretty nicely. You can also rotate there, rotation at the wrist, as well as a hinge at the wrist. 
We do get a ball peg in the midsection right there at the torso. So that rolls around, does rotate left and right. Pivots, crunches, all a bit up uh, fairly decently. It is hindered by the thickness of this belt and the harness right here. So not you're gonna get a crazy a lot of articulation there, uh, but it is a little hindered. These are luckily soft, uh, softer materials. So you can kick up and forward, back, splits, get his Van Dam on, rotation of the upper thigh, uh, double jointed uh, knees that work very, very nicely. Nothing at the boot, but the ankles go up, down, and a very sweet ankle rocker. I also love the little bit of turquoise on the back of the boots. That looks really cool, too. So, uh, overall, this is really awesome. You can see that the sword actually came off. It is just on a little peg, and you can just peg it back on there like that. So, and it'll stay on there. So, that might fall off once you're articulating and moving around and posing. So, you can just peg it back on. It'll stay great. So, again, overall, holy crap, man. I love these figures. You know, again, I don't pick up too many... Uh, but when I do, I just love every single one. The amount of detail that we get here, again, the uniqueness. He's just so badass, so much fun, and I think he would look great in your Star Wars collection. So for a quick size comparison, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends Deadpool and Mafex Batman figure. Also for comparison, here they are sitting next to a Black Series Din Djarin and Grogu. And for even more comparison, here they are sitting next to the Realization Kylo Ren and Imperial Guard. And just for fun, here he is with Little Lego Bat Bomb. So there it is guys, my review of the Realization Mando and Grogu. Now overall I think this is a beautiful set. I don't pick these up often and that's not because I don't like them, that's just because honestly I don't have enough room for them. But when I do pick one up, man I am so thoroughly impressed. The Star Wars designs, especially the Mandalorian armor, lends itself really well to that feudal Japan samurai armor look and it just blends so good. I love the armor detailing from the studs to the paint wash. All the sculpt and line work is just incredible to me. Even down to the fabric looks really nice. Grogu has an amazing sculpt. He, I love his, his little tuft of uh, hair at the top right there. That looks really good too. And I'm glad he's a little articulated. That works out really well. Uh, but I also think it's really inventive that they took his pod and put it in a almost like a stroller, which I think is hilarious. Uh, but again, I love the figure itself of Mando. All his weapons are so well done how they mix in that kind of futuristic yet very ancient look. I think that's so awesome, man. And his rifle holds on better than any other Mandalorian rifle that I've seen on any other figure. So that's a big plus for me. He is a beautiful piece. All these realization figures are so unique and wonderful works of art. And I think you would absolutely love them for your Star Wars collection. So be excellent to each other and stay nerdy, my friends. Peace.